as we welcome you to Columbia, South Carolina. A big time SEC battle between the number two Gamecocks and number 17 Kentucky. As we welcome you inside our homes. Hey everybody, Ryan Rucco along with the Hall of Famer, Rebecca Lobo. Rebecca, you look at these two teams and this matchup between Ryan Howard and Aaliyah Boston, it does not get much better than that. And not only two favorites for SEC Player of the Year, but two of the favorites for National Player of the Year. Aaliyah Boston, such a dominant presence inside and on the defensive end. And Ryan Howard, one of the most talented guards in the country. These teams have met once this season. You see Howard averaging just under 20 points per game, fourth in the SEC. Boston, four straight double-doubles. First meeting back on January 10th, Kentucky won it 75 to 70, and it's South Carolina who wins the tip. Henderson dumps it inside, and good D on the interior from Kentucky, coming up with the stop on Saxton. Really good help defense on that first possession by Kentucky and man to man. Anytime South Carolina gets the ball in the paint, you will see help come. You see the starting lineup for Kentucky. Third straight start for Massengill. As that jumper short rebound taken in by Boston. The starting lineup for South Carolina. Lily Grissett moves into the starting lineup on Seniors Day in Columbia. And Bree Beal will come off the bench for the Gamecocks as that three is too strong from Henderson. The rebound, Grissett can't put it in and secured by Kiki McKinney for Kentucky. And South Carolina didn't come away with a score, but that's where they earn their living, getting to the offensive glass, second and third opportunities. See Massengill running the point, handing it off to Howard. Kyra Elzey making that switch so that Chastity Patterson could play more off the ball and have more scoring opportunities with Massengill running the point. And Blair Green moving to the bench for Kentucky. On the attack, the layup won't go for Cook, but she's fouled. And Zaya Cook is going to shoot two. And I believe that foul was against Howard. And that is an early personal on Ryan Howard. It's good to see Zaya Cook attacking the rim. This is a player who's had some struggles on the offensive end of the floor with her shooting and scoring. Always good for her to get feet in the paint and eyes on the rim. Talking with Dawn Staley and she said that Zaya Cook is pressing to score right now. Just needs to relax. Needs to take less dribbles, make layups. The making layups thing was not exclusive to Zaya Cook for what Dawn Staley is looking for. South Carolina has struggled to make layups for a lot of the season, including in their last game, the loss to Tennessee. There's another right one. Right here, yeah, Grissett missing two in a row. No score yet, two minutes into this first quarter. Here is Howard, the handle, so beautiful. Got it back. Dragging Saxton out. South Carolina 0 for 6 to start. Kentucky 0 for 3. Howard, patient. Gets the screen. Step back 3 gets rejected and controlled by South Carolina. An opportunity in transition, and once again, Cook is fouled. She will shoot 2 after just missing her first 2 from the line. This is a South Carolina team this season that has struggled from the free throw line, only shooting 66%. Zaya Cook in the first meeting. Seven points on two of 12 field goals. Dawn Staley in her 13th season at the helm of South Carolina has called this team probably the most committed defensive team she has ever coached. South Carolina coming off a loss to Tennessee, though. 75-67. And the first points of the game come at the line for Zaya Cook.
We welcome all of you watching on ESPN. First quarter action between Kentucky and South Carolina. Ryan Rucco, the Hall of Famer Rebecca Lobo, happy to be with you on this Sunday afternoon for the SEC on ESPN. Second meeting of the season between these teams. South Carolina took the first, 75-70, back on January 10th. Both teams having a tough time finding an offensive rhythm early here, Rebecca. Yeah, South Carolina's gotten some really good looks, though. They've gotten in the paint. They have just missed some of the shots that they've gotten in there. Ryan Howard has not yet found her rhythm offensively. Nice bounce pass underneath, and Edwards is fouled. So Dreonna Edwards is going to shoot two. Dawn Staley hoping to take her team to a third Final Four in her tenure. South Carolina team that's been ranked twice this season as number one. Has six wins versus top 25 teams, but had its 31-game SEC win streak snapped on Thursday by Tennessee. What stood out to you, Rebecca, about that loss by South Carolina against Tennessee? Uh, some of the, the turnovers that they had, and also they had a lot of layups in that game, Ryan, that they were not able to convert, miss some free throws as well. And Tennessee was a team, they were able to be equal with points in the paint to South Carolina, equal on the boards, and those are two categories that South Carolina normally dominates their opponents. That's out of bounds off of Edwards, going to stay with South Carolina. Meanwhile, Kyra Elsey has done a wonderful job her first season as the head coach of Kentucky, promoted from interim head coach on December 14th. Her ninth season with the program was broken up in between with a little stint at Tennessee. But her first year as the head coach of Kentucky, and right now the 17th ranked team in the nation, as Cook hits from three, an early 5-3 South Carolina lead, four minutes into the first. Dangerous pass retrieved by Massengill. Has to flip it up, couldn't get it to go, and Boston secures it for South Carolina. Here's Henderson blazing to the bucket. Left it short, Grissett can't finish, but is fouled, and Lili Grissett is going to shoot two. He's a really good defensive possession on the other end by South Carolina. That's what they do so well, and then they get the defensive board, push the other way. They are so good in transition. Don Staley said, the games we've lost, our opponent has prevented us from getting out and running. And when we asked Kyra Elzey, and when I say we, it was really you who asked this question, Rebecca, but you know I like <laughs> to take credit for the things that you do. So when we asked Coach Elzey about, you know, how does she know if it's going to be a, a good day for a team? She said, when we start with defensive intensity, when I see us diving on the floor, making hustle plays, and we have seen that to begin this game for Kentucky. Yeah, and then they've had their scouting report uh, on. They're switching the screens. They want to switch. And, and one thing they've done. It up. And one they, the thing they've done really well, Ryan, is keep the ball out of Aaliyah Boston's hands. She does not have a field goal attempt yet. Mm. I believe that was a three-second violation called against Kentucky. And Edwards, so Kentucky turns it over. They are still just one of six from the floor. South Carolina is one of nine. And a whistle here against Kentucky. And that foul is going to be against Robin Benton in off the bench for Kentucky. Right now, Benton, McKinney, Green, Howard, and Edwards are the five for Kentucky. Cook, Boston, Saxon, Littleton, and Grissett for South Carolina as Boston got fouled. And it's either number two on Benton or number two on Howard. So a big call here against Kentucky. South Carolina, an early 6-3 lead. They ended up calling the foul on McKinney instead. 
Rebecca, a massive star matchup today. Yeah, two of the best players in the country, and it starts with Ryan Howard, a 6'2", versatile guard. She can score from all three levels, 36% from three, has a mid-range game and can get inside as well. And then for South Carolina, Aaliyah Boston, the 6'5", center. She has an imposing presence on the defensive end of the floor. Four blocks per game in conference, has extended her range out to three, and an absolute nightmare to deal with when she gets the ball in the paint. Ryan Howard, fourth in the SEC in scoring. Aaliyah Boston, four straight double-doubles. Rebecca, these are two players who are competing for some significant hardware as we get towards the end of this season. Yeah, two of the leading candidates for SEC Player of the Year, both in strong conversation for National Player of the Year. You see Their what last meeting. Yeah, I mean, they both put up big-time games. Boston had seven blocks to go with the 20 and 12. And Boston in that matchup had minutes limited in the first half because of foul trouble. A me here couldn't finish. 7-3 South Carolina lead. They're four of eight from the line. One of 11 from the floor. South Carolina with seven offensive rebounds already in this game. The foul line jumper is good for Blair Green. Off the bench for a third straight game since Kyra Elzey shook up her starting lineup. And that's what exa exactly what Kyra Elzey needs is point production from that position. Great start for Green on her first touch. Littleton gets it over to Grissett. Ami here with seven to shoot, pushes it up and in. A welcome sign for South Carolina, who has not gotten much to go. Ami here had a nice contribution on January 10th. 10 points on five of nine, shooting in the win against Kentucky. Edwards nearly lost it, got it back. Looking off the pass and then denied. Olivia Owens gets rejected by Aaliyah Boston. Uh, and that's what Aaliyah Boston brings, is such a defensive presence inside. Here comes the help side, smacking it out. That's where Owens should have passed to the right corner and let Green take an open look from three. Owens, jab step, jumper, no. Last possession for South Carolina. It looked like they were trying to work the ball around and get Boston a touch. They have not been able to get her the ball on post-ups. Cook. Through the lane, met a body, and that foul is going to go against Olivia Owens. Hey, tomorrow it's Big Monday on ESPN. First up at 7. Syracuse is at Cameron Indoor to take on Duke. And then at 9 p.m., number 15, Texas Tech faces Cade Cunningham and Oklahoma State. Well, one thing we have seen Zaya Cook do early here is get to the line. Cook shooting her fifth and sixth free throws of this opening quarter. In the first matchup between these teams, South Carolina was only 13 of 21 from the free throw line. They have struggled from there this season. In transition, Owens couldn't handle it, and Kentucky coughs it up. With the way and Kentucky's struggling to, to score in this first quarter, Ryan, you cannot afford on transition opportunities to to lose your advantage. They've not been able to get things going on the in the half court. And Kyra Elsie's team does not turn it over often. Only Arkansas turns it over less in the SEC than Kentucky. That is going to be a travel as Leticia Ami here could not quite find her footing, so South Carolina gives it back. 
Sean Staley seen looking to bounce. But yeah, yeah, it's been a little, it's been a little tough thus far, hasn't it, Rebecca? <laughs> yeah, twenty-two percent for Kentucky, seventeen percent for South Carolina. Ugly first quarter so far. Just means things can only go up from here. That's right. The step back three. You see, Chastity Patterson knew what we were talking about. That's a player who can really fill it up, and she has been able to focus more on that with Massengill in the starting lineup now as the point guard. And you saw the three-point numbers pop up there. I mean, they have really been good from Patterson of late. As that putback is good, plus the foul, Victoria Saxton, a chance for three. Eighth offensive rebounds for South Carolina. And that's where they can be so good, is when they're struggling to score, they get second opportunities and third opportunities. And it's their bigs inside, their guards get involved as well. Rebound taken on the missed free throw by Kentucky. South Carolina now 5 of 11 from the line. Patterson dishes into the corner. A three for Green is short. Rebound by Ami here racing up the floor in transition. Here is Beal coming off the bench in this game. Can't spin it in. Rebound secured by Kiki McKinney. Patterson underneath. The patience and the finish from Olivia Owens. And for Kentucky, defensively, you have to get back in defensive transition, but they don't want to slow down the pace offensively. When they have those opportunities to run, Kyra Elsie wants them to take them. Pull up jumper is good from Zaya Cook. Cook now with eight points in this first quarter. She is the game's leading scorer. Averaging just under 16 points per game this season. Massengill sizing up the defense. Howard getting a breather right now for Kentucky. Patterson has the switch, sliding into the paint and floating it home. A really nice job by Patterson when she saw a me here on her. She was still able to get the space and get the floater up there. South Carolina had a two for one opportunity as that shot won't go out of bounds. Off of, it looked like it last hit a me here, but they're gonna say, it is South Carolina ball, and that is what Kiki McKinney was upset about. Yeah, it looked to me that it went off of a knee here and that it should be Kentucky ball. So now a 10 second difference, game and shot clock. Henderson working around a screen from Saxton. Got it to her on the block, couldn't finish. The follow won't go. Loose ball, batted around, taken by Kentucky. Massengill navigated around a few, and Patterson just missed the layup. The follow won't go from Wyatt. One second left in the corner, and that will do it as Beal's attempt is short. South Carolina, two-point lead after one. Going back and forth, the backcourt's getting it done for both teams. Zaya Cook with eight points for South Carolina. Chastity Patterson scoring over the big. And there have been a lot of different number one teams throughout this season. South Carolina for a week, then Stanford held it for six. Louisville took the crown for three weeks and then South Carolina yanked it back before Paige Beckers led UConn to be the current number one team in the nation. More wide open than I can ever remember it being, at least in, in, in recent years, uh, in terms of the favorites to get to the Final Four, the favorites to win a national championship. I can't wait for March. It's going to be exciting, Ryan. Oh, it's going to be amazing. San Antonio is up for grabs. 
Take a look at what's transpired thus far. Neither team shooting well. South Carolina had 10 offensive rebounds in the first as Massengill buries the three. And we have seen the offensive production balloon for Massengill since joining the starting lineup. Yeah, I mean, this is a big guard, six feet with size. She's got a high basketball IQ, making the most of her increased opportunities. Henderson guarded by Massengill. Double comes on Boston, now a triple. Passes out of it, five to shoot. Pull-up jumper, rolls off for Cook, and another offensive rebound for South Carolina. The foul on the floor here is gonna be against Kiki McKinney, her second. Ryan, I think that touch by Aaliyah Boston is the first time she's gotten her hands on the basketball in the paint outside of the offensive rebound that she got early. You see all the defensive attention she's going to get. She's a good passer out of double teams. South Carolina has got to give her more touches inside. And that was something that Dawn Staley was frustrated with in the loss to Tennessee, feeling like her team didn't do a good enough job of getting Boston touches as Dawn Staley having a conversation with Bree Beal right now after she checked out of the game. Meanwhile, this foul that just occurred is number two on Ryan Howard. So that is a very significant foul. And Howard is going to check out for Kentucky. She has not scored yet in this half. She had two quick shots early in the game, has not shot the ball since then. And that's one you just got to let go. It's not worth putting you on the bench to, to, to try to contest a two. Just let it go. You know, you think about it, Rebecca. Boston has scored just one point thus far. Howard has not scored yet. Either team probably would feel pretty decent about what's on the scoreboard right now, given the limited production they've gotten so far from their stars. Don Staley's going to feel better, though, because her star is still on the floor without foul yeah. trouble. <laughs> That's a great point. McKinney, Howard, and Edwards all with two fouls now for Kentucky. Patterson slips it out. Massengill, short. Rebound hugged by Cook. Zaya Cook, good dribble penetration. Saxon on the block. Gets the whistle in the bucket. Victoria Saxon a chance for three. There has been one foul called on South Carolina this game. This is the ninth on Kentucky. Why is that? Well, South Carolina is looking to get inside. They're getting to the paint. They're getting to the offensive glass. They're forcing the refs to blow the whistle. Yeah, I wanted and to ask you that, Rebecca, not to totally put you on the spot, but I mean, that's a grand disparity, but does it feel appropriate because of what's happening on the interior or does it feel excessive? Well, I was going to add, and they're playing at home. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, the style with which you play forces the officials' hands sometimes. And South Carolina has been in attack mode. They've gotten to the offensive glass. They've created contact. And it's resulted in calls and getting to the free throw line. That is going to be Kentucky basketball after the missed free throw. I mean, South Carolina has left a lot to be desired at the free throw line right now. They are 7 for 14 from the line. And a whistle here against South Carolina. So there's one, Rebecca. There you go. And, and keep in mind, when Ryan Howard is on the floor for Kentucky, she is not only their leading scorer, but she facilitates. She draws so much attention, she finds other players so that they can score. Well, now it's a very different look for Kentucky offensively when Hired Howard is on the bench with foul trouble. They're playing through Chastity Patterson now, sending a lot of on-ball screens for her, letting her create. Wyatt. Gets it back into the arms of Patterson, and Boston secures the rebound. Fifth rebound for Boston, who does not have a field goal attempt yet in this game. How about Lily Grissett knifing through traffic to finish? 
Lily Crisette has played really well in this game. She got the start because it's senior day. She played great defensively on Ryan Howard, and she's been active offensively here as well. Foul there against Grissette, and that will be her first. Lily Grissette has been a player this season who's been consistent providing energy off the bench. A big guard, she drives, gets inside, and scores. She's done a really nice job here in her first start of the season. Masson Gill over to Patterson, guarded by Destiny Henderson. Patterson finds Wyatt on the jumper, too strong. Rebound left for South Carolina and Destiny Littleton. Sacks to the deep catch, finds the cutter and Grissette for the easy finish. And Kentucky needs a timeout. It's an 8-0 run for South Carolina. South Carolina playing unselfish basketball. When they get paint touches, good things happen. Grissette getting it going. Drea Carter, Coach Andy Landers, and Kelsey Riggs going to be with you coming up on the Jeep Halftime Report. We'll have a look around the league, all kinds of action, including Louisville, the number three team in the country right now. They are trailing Florida State. We'll take a look at what's going on there. But right now, Drea, what stands out to you from South Carolina, Kentucky? Well, Ryan Howard is on the bench with two fouls. So for Kentucky, I think they need to focus on turning up their defense. We always knew what Andrea Carter and Rebecca Lobo was going to do. These two coaches know what each other is going to do. They're shutting each other down. Seven-point game right now. South Carolina on top, guys. All right, Kelsey, thank you very much. South Carolina, seven-point lead here under seven minutes to go in the second quarter as that little floater won't go on the attempt from Robin Benton. Foul trouble issue for Kentucky, and this is why, I mean, every single touch in the paint for South Carolina is resulting in a whistle as Olivia Owens picks up her second foul. So Owens, Howard, Edwards, McKinney, all with two fouls, and South Carolina has just dominated the glass. You see those numbers so far today. South Carolina has done a really good job pushing pace. They've done a really good job of getting paint touches off of dribble drives and the way we've missed shots, offensive boards, gotten to the free throw line. And Ryan, you and I were talking in the commercial break. Do you put Ryan Howard back in the game? You see she is back in now. The issue is the way the game is being officiated right now, you, know, you really worry about her picking up her third foul. 10-0 South Carolina run. This is their largest lead. Yeah, analytics are driving more and more towards leaving players in. But you're right, Rebecca. In this singular instance, I mean, the, the whistles are coming nearly every touch in the paint for South Carolina. That step back three, or make it a long two, is good for Robin Benton. Up ahead, Grissette can't finish it. Rebound secured by Edwards. By the way, that run did coincide with Howard leaving, so understandably, uh, Kyra Elsey wanted her back in, and now good things have started to happen with Howard back on the floor. Benton a score, and then Edwards with the points. And now Kentucky in a zone defense. This is primarily to protect Howard from picking up that third foul here in the second quarter. Austin has yet to get a field goal attempt in this first half. Henderson with a shot clock winding, able to hit. Nice little jump stop into the jumper. One more time. You like jump stop into the jumper? <laughs> Very much. <laughs> Syllabically, it's the same, even though when we break down the actual words, we know it's not. <laughs> the things you learn from Eminem. 
Super Tuesday on ESPN is a battle in the Big 12. Is number 23 Kansas squares off against number 12 Texas in Austin, 9 p.m. on ESPN. Their first meeting, the Longhorns handed Kansas its largest home defeat in the Bill Self era. We'll see what happens in matchup number two there. Meanwhile, Dawn Staley actively directing traffic. Her team leading by seven with under five minutes to go in this second. South Carolina started the game four for 20 from the floor, but they are four of five since. But they still got to the free throw line. They still got a fouls to accrue on Kentucky. I mean, they are so good getting themselves second opportunities by getting to the offensive glass. Now a steal. Benton, met by Grissett, squeezes it over to Massengill. Massengill looking for help. Finding it in Howard, who is fouled. Ryan Howard's yet to score in this first half. I don't think anyone would have had the over-under in point total between Boston and Howard as being <laughs> one with 4.35 to go in the second. I'd like to see her going to get the basketball on this past possession, though, because if you're in the game with foul trouble, you're in there to make things happen on the offensive end. The last two possessions, she did not get touches. You still have to play through Ryan Howard and let her make the decisions. Edwards tried the crossover. Boston was not having it. Loose ball scraped up by Massengill. Her jumper short. Rebound flicked into the arms of Boston. Seven rebounds now for Boston as uh, me here gets rejected by Howard. Three on one developing. Poor pass from Massengill went behind Benton. And again, Rebecca, that's what you're talking about. Missed opportunity in transition. Yeah, and right afterwards, Massengill pointed at Howard, like recognizing, yes, you were there. I should have gone left with the basketball instead of right. Boston finally gets a field goal attempt, can't hit. Another offensive rebound for South Carolina. Cook misses the three, and this time it's secured by McKinney. But those are the threes you want off an offensive board, on a catch and shoot. And a carry called there against Howard. Went for the Hezzy, and it was not accepted. Sometimes the Hezzy's so good that it can look like a carry. And then yeah. sometimes it is a carry. Boston on the block, surrounded, tried to squeeze it up, could not. Another chance, though, for South Carolina. Against that Kentucky zone. Henderson, a three, is good. South Carolina now two for four from the three-point line, and so many teams pack it inside, daring them to shoot. And when South Carolina struggles, they struggle from the three-point line as well. Lead back to 10. Kick ball is going to keep it here. Nice job by Aaliyah Boston, reversing the basketball. The defense is late. Henderson able to drain the three. She has shot well in her last few games, including from the three-point line. It was 50% from three in her last three and connects on that one there. Senior day in South Carolina. You see the limited capacity of fans on hand to watch the Gamecocks who have a 29-19 lead over Kentucky. 2.47 to go in this second quarter. Nice inbound, frees up McKinney for the lay. You mentioned senior day. Lily Grissett, the senior for South Carolina. She's been great. She's been really good offensively, defensively as well. It's a player saying, all right, I got the start because it's senior day, but I want to get the start in the next game <laughs> and the game after that. And Bree Beal is the player who 
coming off the bench now as a result of that has only played four minutes here in the first half because Grisette has been so good. Now that was number three on Edwards. Fouling Boston also put South Carolina in the bonus. So three on Edwards, two on Owens, two on McKinney, two on Howard. Edwards will check out with her third and Boston is gonna to go to the line. She is 0 for 2 from the floor, 1 for 2 from the line. Rebecca, what in particular are you seeing from Kentucky that is preventing Boston from getting the normal attempts that we see? They're flooding the paint. They're surrounding Aaliyah Boston. They're trying to keep the basketball out of her hands, whether they were in the man D, and there's another <laughs> offensive rebound. But whether Kentucky's been in man or zone, and I think sometimes South Carolina needs to be more patient and more deliberate at trying to get Boston the touches. South Carolina is not a great passing team. They're not a great team passing into the post. Howard buries the three. First points of the game for Ryan Howard. Brissett inside can't finish. Rebound Howard. Does she get a little something cooking now? Howard gives it up to the corner. Patterson, the kick, straight on three, no. Good offense, though, by Kentucky. They, they worked it, they got a paint touch, they get an open look from three. And McKinney has shot it at 39% from three this season. Nice turn from Zaya Cook around the corner. And she's the first player in double figures today. Here's Howard, quick turn, and a connection on a three. She just needs a little bit of space. Grissette barely got held up on that screen. <laughs> Howard was barely even squared up, still able to drain the shot. Deep catch, Boston, and that is going to be an offensive foul against Aaliyah Boston, and that will be her first personal. Well, Ryan Howard, Aaliyah Boston have both been monsters this season and thus far in their collegiate careers, but very quiet today. Howard starting to awaken these last couple possessions. She has scored Kentucky's last six. Wyatt gives it back. Patterson, step back jumper way off. Gets her own rebound, can't float it in, and Boston secures her eighth board. In transition, Cook gets denied, and it's out of bounds off of Kentucky. Really nice job by Massengill to get back. We talked about it before. She's six feet tall and long. It looked like South Carolina had numbers, but right there, nice block by Massengill. In the corner, Cook got free. Can hit from three. And me here, another offensive rebound. That is the 15th offensive rebound of the first half for South Carolina. Anderson can't turn it into points. It's out of bounds off of Ami here. And it is going to be Kentucky basketball with the shot clock turned off and 26.5 to go in the second quarter. Just saw the graphic. That's been the story of the game so far. Offensive rebound, second chance points for South Carolina. Howard letting the clock wind. Shooing away Wyatt. Now Wyatt comes with a screen. Seven seconds left in the quarter. Howard out of the double, finds Wyatt to the wing, a three. He is good for Massengill at the buzzer to make this a much closer four-point game at the half. South Carolina dominates the glass. They have a four-point lead at the half as we head to studio for the halftime report with Kelsey Riggs. This is the SEC on ESPN. Well, the first half, our big stars, Ryan Howard and Aaliyah Boston, were unusually quiet. We'll see what they have in store for half number two. As we say hello again, Ryan Rucco, along with the Hall of Famer, 
Rebecca Lobo. Rebecca, Kentucky able to close the gap a little bit at the end of that second quarter, but the first half headline was just the dominance from South Carolina on the offensive glass. That's, that's South Carolina doing what South Carolina does. They were phenomenal attacking the offensive glass. It didn't matter if it was against a man or a zone defense. They were able to get inside 15 offensive boards, five different players mixing it up. They had post players getting O boards, guards getting O boards. You know when you go against South Carolina, it's going to be a problem, and you have to box out and try to limit them inside as best you can. South Carolina, a 34-30 lead on Kentucky as we start the third quarter. You see the numbers from that first half. Kentucky did shoot 5 of 10 from 3. South Carolina dominated the line 10 of 18. Did not shoot well there, but had 18 attempts compared to Kentucky's 2. Brissett starting the second half as well and rolling it in. Rebecca, she is making the most of her senior day start. Absolutely, and you saw the first possession of the game, Kentucky, or the half, Kentucky back into a man. South Carolina goes right at Ryan Howard with Grissett trying to pick up that third foul. Grissett able to score. Howard step back, short, long rebound tracked beautifully by Patterson. McKinney dumps it to the elbow, and the jumper won't roll in from Tatiana Wyatt. Henderson blazing to the free throw line and an easy bucket. I mean, she is so good at pushing pace, getting them into transition, getting South Carolina to play the pace they want to play. And Kentucky's going to take a timeout right away. Did not like the way that third quarter started. Dawn Staley, as well as Kyra Elsie, will be a part of that conversation. Really looking forward to it. Our LZ is saying, you know, we give people hope that you can have a seat at the table. We give other African-American women hope that you can have a seat at the table. There is Coach Kyra Elzey, and that's a picture of her son, Jackson Lander. He's four years old, and those are two of his classmates. They have a teacher come into her house to teach pre-K four, and she was saying that one of the girls in his class was telling her son, you know, girls run the world. My voice is my power, and I am going to use it. So little Jackson Lander's hearing it from mom. He's hearing it from the girls that, the women that she coaches, and he's hearing it from his two little four-year-old classmates. I love it. And I think we all know that his classmate is correct. Of course we do. <laughs> so I'm glad Jackson is learning this early. Adorable. Here's Howard after the offensive foul against South Carolina. Howard at two threes right at the end of the second quarter for her first points of the game. Dishes to the corner, McKinney off on a three, and the weak sideboard taken by Henderson, just zipping up the floor. Cook now into the lane, hooks it up short, and that's gonna be a jump ball. Possession arrow belongs to Kentucky. The pressure, though, that Henderson and Cook can put it on you in transition. Uh, yeah, you better get down the floor. And it's one of the reasons teams that go against South Carolina, they can't attack their own offensive glass because they are so worried about getting back in defensive transition. Kentucky with four offensive boards in this game to South Carolina's 15. Mm. Kentucky yet to score this half. Massengill. Looking inside, good look underneath. Wyatt able to finish on a hard delivery from McKinney. Really nice high low look and a great job by Wyatt. The little pump fake, get the defender off her feet so you can't get your shot blocked. Henderson, giving it up. Getting it back. Working on Howard fading away, can't drop it in. And a foul's going the other way as Grissett went over the back. And that is going to be the second foul on Lily Grissett. Hey, tonight, 
Two of the association's top teams highlight our special NBA Sunday West Coast matchup on ESPN. James Harden and the Red Hot Nets finish up a big five-game road trip against Kawhi and the Clippers. Coverage begins at 7 p.m. Eastern with NBA Countdown. Nets on a five-game winning streak. They are 4-0 thus far on their five-game West Coast road trip. Clippers just back healthy. That should be a really fun game tonight. Shot clock at five. Massengill kicks off the hands of Edwards, trying to retrieve. Shot clock fading, and it expires as Kentucky turns it over. Not a ton of turnovers for either team in this game, even though there's been a lack of fluidity at times on the offensive end. You saw just six turnovers for Kentucky, five for South Carolina. Boston will pull and hit offensive board. Saxton puts it in on the follow. Saxton able just to reach right over McKinney without creating enough contact for a foul. Howard tried to force the pass inside. Couldn't get it to the target. And Cook goes in for the bucket and the foul. Nassingill with the little touch foul. And Cook has a chance for three. Great job by Cook here to garner the basketball. And you know they're going to push the other way. Ooh. Did she get her at all, Ryan? Maybe a tap on the head? Sure. Well, that's what Massagill is contesting. 12 of South Carolina's 15 field goals have come in the paint in this game. They're now 11 of 19 from the line. They have an 11 point lead. Patterson had a little trouble with the handle. Edwards sets the screen, gets it on the roll, lost it, got it back. McKinney hits. For the attention defensively that South Carolina is bringing when the ball goes in the paint, those mid-range jumpers are going to be there. Kentucky has to hit them. Well, that foul is going to be on McKinney, and it will be her third. Now three on Edwards, three on McKinney. Benton into the game as Massengill gets a breather. Massengill. Six points thus far today. That floater is good. Destiny Henderson now with nine points on four of eight shooting. You talk about South Carolina's ability to score in the paint, and you would think, oh, that must mean it's their bigs. No, it's their guards getting paint touches as well. That's the way it's been all season for them. Edwards was able to finagle that into the hoop. Cook on the attack. There you go, Rebecca. Another guard, another bucket in the paint. Patterson has quickness, but Cook certainly has the size and strength and just overpowered her there. Howard gives it up. Kinney had a look there from three, he didn't take it. Instead, a corner three is no good for Benton. That's gonna be an over the back on Edwards. Her fourth foul will step aside. South Carolina by 11. Who throws up a prayer three back rim and in? Are you kidding? Wow. Answered prayer for the freshman Paige Beckers, and that could be the dagger. Well, Paige Beckers with those two massive buckets certainly storming into the National Player of the Year conversation. You see candidates from the top 10 teams, there are others 
from teams outside the top 10, like Ryan Howard, who we just saw, as well as Caitlin Clark, Nas Hillman, Rebecca. Feels like a wide open field. Anyone separating for you? You know, we talked about it earlier in this game, how it feels like it's a little bit more wide open in terms of Final Four teams and national championship contenders. It feels the exact same way in the National Player of the Year conversation. I cannot remember a time when we had this big of a field that hadn't really started to narrow at this point in the season. And you see right there, Aaliyah Boston, certainly one of those players. Yeah, it's incredible. And you wonder just how these next couple of weeks might end up shape, shaping that conversation as the layup goes in for Olivia Owens. And Kentucky, Kentucky extending their, extending yes. their pressure defense now. And nearly coming up with another turnover as South Carolina just got it across the timeline. Kentucky trying to increase the pace of play. Also, when you pick up in full court pressure, it can give your own team more energy. And a whistle here against Owens. That'll be her fourth. So, or make it her third. So, three on Owens, four on Edwards, three on McKinney for Kentucky. Seventeen fouls on Kentucky to seven against South Carolina so far today. And South Carolina it's all now of, twelve of twenty from the line. It's all of Kentucky's bigs that are in foul trouble. Howard has managed to avoid her third foul after picking up her second early in the second quarter. Patterson comes back for it. Good D. Amihir uh, just jumping around to snatch it. Little pull up, too strong. Rebound taken by Kentucky and Benton. Here is Howard zigging, zagging, dishing, and the rejection from Ami here to deny Owens. But the right idea, looking to attack with Aaliyah Boston not on the floor. South Carolina has other shot blockers, but Boston is their best. McKinney's jumper, too strong. And this is going to be a jump ball. South Carolina owns the possession arrow. South Carolina leads the nation in block shots. And me here gets in there blocks. We've seen Aaliyah Boston all season long patrolling the paint. It allows them to take more chances in terms of their perimeter defense when they know they've got shot blockers behind them cleaning things up. Four blocks today for South Carolina. Kentucky actually with eight. Applying pressure again. Destiny Henderson was able to just spin right out of it. Reveal into the game for South Carolina. Boston back on the floor. The spin from Amir and couldn't finish. Boston bats it alive, but Howard ends up with it for Kentucky. Here comes Howard. Howard lost the handle. Good D there from Bree Beal and another jump ball. This time it's Kentucky who has the possession arrow. Grissette at the start of the game. Bree Beal and her minutes have made things very difficult for Ryan Howard. Both are guards with good size who take a lot of pride in what they do on the defensive end of the floor. And Howard just two for seven from the floor. I mean, great effort by Bree Beal. Oh, Howard lands right on her head. Howard was probably fortunate to get a jump ball called there rather than a foul. Yeah. Benton got hand-checked. 
on the drive by Henderson. Second foul on Destiny Henderson. And this is going to be a non-shooting foul on that drive. Oh, nice inbound play there that freed up Owens for the easy layup. Henderson meets a wall, can't finish, a knee here amongst the trees. And it's going to be another jump ball. South Carolina with the possession arrow this time. And Destiny Henderson and her quickness and ability to get touches in the paint. She doesn't get the shot to go, but it distorts the defense and allows another offensive board by South Carolina. And now a steal on the inbound creates an opportunity in transition. Massengill, and it's going to be out of bounds off of Kentucky. South Carolina ball, but Kentucky has just really struggled executing in transition throughout this game. You can't give post players when they're running full speed the ball in two tight quarters. And now Kentucky comes up with a steal on the inbound. Howard, Kentucky down nine. McKinney tried to dump it in. Amihir went for the steal and came up with it. How disruptive has Amihir been in here in the third quarter? And Cook finishes plus the foul. A chance for three for Zaya Cook as South Carolina continues to rumble in transition. And that last possession shows you what's so good about South Carolina. Tough defense, helping one another, and then pushing the other way, getting out in transition. Cook inside with the and one. Seventeen points for Zaya Cook. Dawn Staley told us before the game was pressing to score, just needs to relax, needs to make her layups. Rebecca, she has to be encouraged by the performance here today. Without question, and, and I liked how Zaya Cook from the start of this game was looking to be aggressive, but going to the rim. She wasn't taking pull-up jumpers. She's found a flow, done a really nice job offensively. Benton lost it. Boston has it. Two on one. Cook to Henderson for the layup. South Carolina, its largest lead of the game. It has swelled to 14. South Carolina is one of the best defensive teams in the country. And on nights when they might struggle to score in their half court, they can make a difference on this end of the floor. They get a steal, a run out. They're quick guards, always looking to push. Great outlet pass by Aaliyah Boston. Unselfish basketball, great finish by Henderson. Let's take a look at our McDonald's All-American Spotlight. Zaya Cook. 18 points in this game. 6 of 14 from the floor, has been able to use speed and physicality and has really been consistent throughout the afternoon leading the charge for South Carolina. Yes, yeah, certainly. And, and this is a point of the season where you need your scores and your guns to find their rhythm and to be able to relax and to not press. And it seems like Zaya Cook is working her way out of that. Six turnovers in the quarter for Kentucky. South Carolina has 10 points off of those turnovers. Every one of South Carolina's field goals in this third quarter has come in the paint. Shot clock at five. Patterson scoops it in. Boston trapped in the backcourt. Gives it up to Henderson. Anderson jogs it across. Ten seconds left in the third. Anderson around the screen. Gives it up. Cook! You bet! 
Isaiah Cook with a fitting end to the third, connecting from downtown, and gives South Carolina a 15 point lead as we head to the fourth. South Carolina is a dangerous team when Zaya Cook has found a rhythm. She's getting out in transition. Ooh, watch out if she's feeling it from three. Championship week coming. And taking a look at the SEC bracketology with Charlie Cream. Anything stand out to you here, Rebecca? This stuff keeps changing, right? Today, Louisville goes down. They're now a, a two seed instead of a one seed. This time of year, this stuff keeps moving around. I love it. You see South Carolina projected one, Texas A&M a two, Tennessee lost today to Georgia. So what happens there is projected three seeds. Arkansas is one of those teams, Rebecca, that no one's going to want to see. No. Their ability to score the ball, especially when they're hot from the three-point line and get to the free throw line in the NCAA tournament, they could cause some problems for people. San Antonio is going to be wild and unpredictable, which is not usually how people describe the city of San Antonio. In the corner, the jumper is good. Nothing on the San Antonio line, huh, Rebecca? I guess you do think it's wild and unpredictable as a city. <laughs> I'm sorry, I was talking no, to our producer. Ahead. I didn't hear you. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, and it's going to be only more so, Ryan, during COVID with you and I there. That's right. Good recovery. <laughs> Out of Kentucky bounds. Now, in Kentucky now in a 1-2-2 two, two zone, you know, trying to find a way to prevent points in the paint, trying to find a way to get to the defensive boards. And offensively, they need to find a way to get Ryan Howard going. She is their best chance to cut into this 13-point deficit. Yeah, Howard has no points in this second half as she gets fouled here and finally has a chance to crack that as she'll go to the line. But remember, I mean, Howard's six points, they came on two threes at the end of the second quarter. For the most part, she has been completely shut down by South Carolina. South Carolina's defense has been outstanding. Grissette to start the game. Beal, when she's come in in her minutes, again, they are both big guards who pride themselves on the defensive end of the floor. But I think Ryan Howard needs to look to be more aggressive. I like that she just went into the paint looking to score. But keep in mind, when you have early foul trouble, that can mess with you. That can, that can affect your aggressiveness throughout the course of the game. Eleven point South Carolina lead. South Carolina just had their 31 game SEC winning streak snapped against Tennessee last time out. Cook kicks it out. Henderson connects on a three. And a really good decision by Zaya Cook. She got inside. She doesn't force a shot or a pass, makes the perfect pass out. Cook. Zipping into the lane, can't finish. The follow won't go from a me here. She stumbles to the ground and travels. Well, she's brought some really good things. A me here has brought some really nice things off the bench. And Ryan, a couple weeks ago when we did a South Carolina game, Don Staley was trying to find more answers off the bench. Tonight, Grissette started, but usually she's been coming off the bench really good. And me here is also finding her way off the bench for South Carolina. Howard was trying to get back in bounds to become available. Now she, I believe, hit her face on the floor. Hey, tomorrow it's Big Monday on ESPN. First up at 7 p.m., Syracuse is at Cameron Indoor to take on Duke. Then at 9 p.m., number 15, Texas Tech faces Kate Cunningham and Oklahoma State. See if Howard is all right. After, look like banged her shin on the floor. But it has 
has undoubtedly been a frustrating afternoon for Ryan Howard. Two of seven from the floor. This has not been involved the way she normally is, as Boston could say the same, as that is her first field goal of the game. And look at the smile. I mean, one of the things that consistently impresses me about Aaliyah Boston is she doesn't get frustrated. If she doesn't get a lot of touches on the offensive, and she still attacks the offensive boards every time. She still works hard. She still encourages her teammates. She does all of the little things and stays engaged even when she doesn't get a bunch of looks offensively. Now, the flip side of things for Ryan Howard, Rebecca, one of the things that Kyra Elsie talked about was, you know, first two years, she didn't know if Ryan's vocal cords were. And now she feels like she's getting more comfortable sort of embracing that vocal leadership role that comes along with being the best player on the team. It was a challenge that she issued to Ryan. She said she talked to her, too, after their loss to Tennessee, and she told Ryan, you know, you cannot visibly show your frustration. That lets your teammates down. And she said, that really cut Ryan to the core. She felt terrible about, about that. And I think she's done a better job here today, Ryan, in terms of her frustrations and, and not letting it visibly um, af affect her body language on the floor. McKinney can hit the jumper. Rebound flagged down by Henderson. The backcourt of South Carolina has had a wonderful afternoon between Cook and Henderson, accounting for 35 of South Carolina's points, just the two of them, and you see the backcourt advantage overall for the Gamecocks. Amir hops into a little bunny. Just solid. She's been really, really solid offensively and de defensively here today. She is just two points away from a double-double. The lead is 18, the largest of the game for South Carolina. Patterson kicks it out. McKinney with five to shoot, lost the handle. Massengill, no. That possession showed you why Aaliyah Boston is one of the favorites for Defensive Player of the Year. Nice pass inside to Ami here. That last possession, Aaliyah Boston switched out onto the point guard, didn't let her go by, and still got the defensive board. A 20-point South Carolina lead here in the fourth. <laughs> Let's take a look at our Capital One rewarding performance. And how about the afternoon from Zaya Cook, Rebecca? Yeah, she has been really good. Aggressive to the basket from the beginning of this game. 21 points. She's let her shot come to her. Two of five from three. Impressed with the way she approached this game from the jump. We started this game talking about Ryan Howard and Aaliyah Boston. They've combined for just 12 points. But South Carolina has dominated in second chance points, a 16-0 advantage. They're currently on a 9-0 run and have built a 20-point lead over Kentucky with 6-0-8 to go in this fourth quarter. You have to have size when you go against South Carolina in depth in the post because they are relentless going to the glass. And Kentucky exacerbated that early by getting players in foul trouble, including, including Ryan Howard. But it is so hard going against South Carolina because it's not just sometimes that they crash the boards. It's every single time. They are a plus 17 on the glass in this game. And they have 19 offensive rebounds. Howard spins, draws two, finds some help, gets it back. Howard cradles, cups, and gets fouled. I think she should keep attacking. We saw her a few possessions ago, got to the rim here, gets the foul called. I know it's hard. South Carolina's playing very, very good defense on her, but I like it when she's gotten in the paint looking to attack. You know what I think, Rebecca? What do you think, Ryan? I think Kentucky might need 
some Thomas Russian, your son, magic. Because from what I hear, <laughs> he hit the game-tying three today and then the game-winning two in overtime. That's what I hear. I'm getting these updates on seventh grade boys basketball. It's exciting stuff. I was pumped. And I saw the highlights. <laughs> Ridiculous step back to free himself. I mean, his He's mom's a Hall of Famer, so I should expect it. He's but been watching he, Ryan Howard and Zaya Cook here today. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Howard now up to 10 points after the free throw. See if Kentucky has a burst left in them. Down 18. Henderson can't hit the three. Another offensive rebound. Brissett on senior day has been so effective on the interior. I've been so impressed with her today. Uh, getting her first start of the season, offensively really good, but she's had the tough defensive assignment of being on Howard all, all day. Anderson pedals it forward. Under five minutes to go in the fourth, and South Carolina a 20-point lead on Kentucky. As Dawn Staley steps up to direct traffic. That's a huge South Carolina lineup, by the way, with Bree Beal playing the two. You see Ami here taking it there inside as the four, Boston as the five, Grissette as the three. This is a huge lineup for South Carolina. What do you think about different teams across the country, Rebecca? Who do you think of size-wise that can match up with South Carolina, especially when they're playing big? Baylor is one of them. Baylor has nice depth in the post and size. Tennessee was one, and that was one of the reasons they were able to beat South Carolina in their last game. They didn't out-rebound South Carolina, but they were even on the boards, and that's always huge when you go against the Gamecocks. Stanford, another team with good size and depth in the post. And you saw that little promo pop up in the top of your screen. Arizona-Stanford tomorrow should be an awesome game. Boston nearly yanked it away, but they got called for the foul. And that'll be number three on Aaliyah Boston. Stanford-Arizona, of course, will feature Ari McDonald, one of those player of the year candidates, Rebecca. And you take a look at her WNBA draft status. The ESPN's mock draft has her going eighth in this upcoming WNBA draft. Yeah, player with terrific quickness, a tremendous defensive player, the Pac-12 defensive player of the year a season ago. She can get after it offensively. Now when Arizona and Stanford met the first time around, Arizona really struggled, and, and Stanford was able to get a big lead early and hold on to it. But Arizona has given teams trouble on the defensive end of the floor. If they can find, can continue to find players to complement McDonald on the offensive end, whether that's Kate Reese or Sam Thomas, they can give Stanford a run. To be here. Finds the cutter, Grissett, another layup. Grissett with 13 points, six rebounds. That three too strong. Lands in the lap of Massengill. This was a four-point game at the half, but South Carolina has dominated the third and fourth quarters. Patterson flips it up and off. Another rebound for Ami here, her 12th to go with 12 points. Yes, Brissett was fouled on the floor by Edwards, and that'll be number five on Edwards, so she is fouled out. I'm always happy for seniors who play well on their senior day. And Lily Grissett has certainly done that. And on an, on an afternoon when Aaliyah Boston only has four points, South Carolina still has four players in double figure scoring. Grissett being one of them.
Edwards has fouled out. Kentucky does not have a field goal in the last six minutes and 40 seconds. Anderson whips it out. That three, no good from Russell. As South Carolina can start to think about emptying the bench. As you see how long Kentucky's gone without a field goal now. More than seven minutes. Howard on the drive gets rejected by Grissett. Anderson tried to thread the needle. It deflected to a knee here. And Howard will finally collect it. Just two field goals on the day for Howard as Wyatt can't stick that. Did you hear Leah Boston screaming ice and her teammate didn't respond initially, so she screams it again. That's a player, a young player, a sophomore, a captain of this team, finding her voice in a big way as well. South Carolina turns it over with 1.48 to go in this fourth. And a really strong bounce back performance after falling to Tennessee. Boston checks out. And as Rebecca said, may not have had the scoring touch today, but did not affect the vocality or the smile of Aaliyah Boston. Or certainly the impact on the defensive end of the floor. I mean, she can switch out onto guards. She is always in the back of the players' minds because they know they've got a shot blocker inside. The numbers certainly do not always reflect the impact that Aaliyah Boston has on the ball game. Howard can hit from three. Another rebound for Ami here, her 13th. And a whistle underneath against Kentucky. Rebecca, how does Kentucky move forward after this game? What, what's an important lesson for them to learn today that might help Kyra Elsie's team the rest of the way? Well, certainly it's another emphasis on the importance of boxing out and defensive rebounding. It, you, the importance to Ryan Howard specifically that you can't take silly second fouls, give up the two points so that you don't put yourself on the bench. And then, of course, to her teammates to know, you know how vitally important they are offensively, especially when Ryan Howard is going to be drawing so much defensive attention. Russell draws the foul and will go to the line. But the game certainly changed, Ryan, when Howard got her second foul and had to come out. That's when South Carolina really started to, to start their run and go on a run. And she's got to make sure she doesn't pick those up. Give up the two points. It's just two points. And you got to stay on the floor. They went on a 10-0 run as soon as Howard checked out. And a game that had been a one possession game changed as Dawn Staley has a little conversation with Ryan. Howard gets fouled, and Ryan Howard's going to shoot two. First time these teams met, Ryan Howard had 32 points. South Carolina simply couldn't stop her, whether, whether it was pull-ups off of ball screens or whatever. And, and, and we just saw an example of what she can do so well. Just a quick look off a ball screen at 6'2". She can see over the defenders, but not able to get it going here offensively today. Yeah, I like talking to Kyra Elzey about Ryan. She said, you know, it just always looks effortless. I'll joke with her sometimes and say, did you break a sweat today? <laughs> she said, I'll say that when I really want to get under her skin. Yeah. <laughs> 50 seconds to go in this one. Off the steal, the layup too strong. 
from Roach. And now about a 15 second differential game and shot clock. Russell goes to the reverse and able to scoop it in. Well, South Carolina has outscored Kentucky 42 to 22 in this second half. Howard, Hoist, can't hit. Roach can't get it to drop either, and a chance for three with 1.9 to go on the putback. As Aaliyah Boston and Lily Grissett have some fun. Senior day for Grissett. Big time performance from her. Jumping into the starting lineup for the first time this season. Wyatt completes the three-point play. And that will do it. An impressive bounce-back win from South Carolina as they take down Kentucky 76-55, to the final. Rebecca... Dawn Staley talked about being very unhappy with her team giving up 50 points in the second half against Tennessee. Well, much different second half here. Gave up just 25 in the second half to Kentucky. Big time defensive performance from the Gamecocks. Yeah, really good from the start of this game on the defensive end of the floor. And they were helping one another. Aaliyah Boston, the anchor inside defensively. I mean... This is just a terrific defensive performance all around by the Gamecocks. And Zaya Cook with an enormous afternoon. Yeah, Zaya Cook was absolutely terrific today. 21 points, 7 of 17 from the field. From the start of this game, she was looking to be aggressive, getting touches in the paint. And then when that came and she got to the free throw line, she extended out to the three-point line as well. A really good offensive performance by Zaya Cook. And Zaya Cook, nice enough to join us. Now, Zaya, 21 points in this game. Felt like you really set the tone early. What did you find yourself doing? How did you find a rhythm in this game? Um, basically, just from practice. Uh, the things I've been doing in practice. Oh, Coach, Coach just put an emphasis on getting to the basket, and she wanted us to score in transition. So when I was working out by myself and also when I was working out with my team, I was making sure I was getting to the basket and trying to uh, score without through the foul. Don Staley told us that she was not thrilled with the 50 points your team gave, gave up mm -hmm. to Tennessee in the second half of your last game. How were you able to refocus and lock down defensively here against Kentucky? Uh, just having conversations. We had a very deep conversation after the loss against Tennessee, and we just had to dial in with each other, and uh, we're trying to get back to the things that we were doing before. Zaya, I want to ask you about your teammate, senior Lily Grissett. Gets her first start of the season and just has a terrific performance, 13.6 rebounds. How good do you feel as a teammate to watch your senior play as well as she did on senior day? Very good. It's well-deserved. Um, I knew it was coming, and uh, she always brings the energy off the bench, and this is what we need. I hope she continue to do that. <laughs> well, Zaya, congratulations. congratulations on your performance and the win, and we will see you down the road. Thank you. Well, Zaya was just talking about Lily Grissett, senior day. Rebecca, you mentioned it before. You feel good for the senior when they get the start on senior day and they play as well as Lily did today first start of the season and she was ready to go from the jump she's been a burst of energy off the bench well she was that in the starting lineup 13 points six boards always feel good for the senior when they come through on their day and you didn't have the beefy scoring from Aaliyah Boston no problem Zaya Cook with 21 Destiny Henderson with 14 Lily Grissett with 13 as South Carolina wins it 76 to 55 over Kentucky